Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, we have a new donation link. It's down in the description if you're so inclined. We very much appreciate it. And with that being said, let's get to today's video. That's how you want to start, right there. That's hey, how you want to start. welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Will. Oh, my name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, listening, or watching. Doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Um, Will, we, welcome back. Thank you. Should thank we tell you. him what just happened? Uh, oh, if... Pff, I was not waiting for you. I was going <laughs> to oh, run into that. You were sagging into Yeah. It. Okay. Uh, so, we, we do this thing. We have our, our nice, pretty music in the beginning that plays... We like to listen to it to know when we should start so it flows well. Okay, yeah. cool. So, it wasn't playing, and we're looking at logic like, what? 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 Where's it going wrong? Everything looks right. So, then Kevin turns up the volume, unmutes his computer, and lo and okay, behold. So here, just to clarify, the, the cloud parted was on the audio interface first. I had to switch that over, but then that just <laughs> happened. It was muted. My bad. A thousand pardons, my lord. A thousand pardons. It was still muted. That's the point. It was hilarious. Shut up. Yeah, fun. That's how you want to start. Okay. I want uh, parts back. All right. <laughs> I know where he lives. I'll go grab him for you. Uh, no, Will, it is great to have you back. Thank I do you, want man. to throw a quick thank you to Parks again for uh, I hope, subbing in. I hope he comes episode. more often, man. That was a fun... Yeah, me too. Was a it was a lot of fun. Wow. Family friendly. The gall. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Parks is very, very knowledgeable, very, very skilled, at especially uh, standard and cube magic. Uh, heck yeah. He's fantastic. He's, so. uh, he's way better than uh, you and me. He did own me pretty hard when we Winston drafted. Ouch. He like two owed me because I drafted a storm deck. <laughs> of course you did. What was your win con, dude? Uh, I had grape shot, brainstorm, and mind's desire. Uh, and I think I had empty warrens. I had access to all of these. I didn't okay. have tendrils, which is clearly the best one. Right. But... Um, but I did end up putting mind's desire and grape shot in. Okay. I mean, mind's desire. Mind's Desire is not great. It's, it's not, not a wing, wing con, con by itself, right. but right. with Grape right. Shot right. in your deck, right. the idea is that it you Mind's be... Desire into win. <laughs> exactly. Shot. Okay. Um, it's just the problem that I had the first game hmm. was I fizzled, like I just didn't <sighs> have enough draw and free stuff to storm off right. efficiently. I was able to do like ten damage, five ten damage, somewhere in that range, and clear his board because obviously going to his face with ten damage doesn't really matter. So like I cleared True. his board which was fine, and it got me into a position where I could hold it out, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, and then the second game, I just got flooded. Like, I I drew, like, five lands in a row. Hey, dims to breaks. It happens. Dims to breaks. Um, his deck was clearly better than mine. Ah, well, 100%. Hey. I will say, though, when he and I uh, cube drafted, like, the week before, we played six games. He only won one. There you go. Because I still have to be on top all my show. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one alone because we are a family friendly podcast. Ah, uh, we already ruined that. Anyway, <laughs> guys, welcome. A uh, quick overview of what we're going to be talking about uh, today. It might be a bit of a shorter <clears throat> episode, but of course we are going to kick off with our random card of the day. Um, yeah. By the way, if you see us use our phones a lot in this video, it's solely because our internet is not functional at the moment. <laughs> Thanks, internet. Thanks, internet. Way to be there. Hate so you. we're using our phones. Yeah. So if you see us looking down a lot, we apologize in advance. Um, I'll hold it here. Yeah, that way you fine. can. We'll hold it right here. <laughs> um, we also want to talk about price changes in Rivals of Ixalan. It's been yep. out for a few weeks now, so we thought we would do our normal thing, which is to look at those. Uh, we, of course, then have our question of the week and then our cracker packs, which are nicely wrapped in actual wrappers because we didn't pre open them. Uh, we're really excited about that's, that. I have a really loose pack, and that's one of my favorite things about certain packs of Magic, that the cards just bobble in there. What I think is funny is you can tell when we care about a set and when we don't. Why is that? Because if we care about a set, we open it immediately because we want to know what we got. Oh, yeah. When we don't care about a set, we get to open it live. <laughs> so, True. No. Um, <laughs> we actually just decided we're going to try and do this from here on out because oh, it's, it's weird to yeah. have free open packs. Eh, it's fine. Um, yeah. 
So, all right, let's jump into let's it. Let's kick off with our random card mm. of the day again on the phone. Sorry oh yeah, guys. I forgot. It was like it comes up right there. Yeah, it doesn't. Nope, not not tonight. Okay, this is an interesting one. Carnival Hellsteed. It is mm. four a black and a red for a four, a five four. Excuse me. Uh, first strike haste and unleash. Which if you don't know what that does, you may have this creature enter the battlefield with a one one counter on it. Uh, it cannot block. As long as it has mm -hmm. that one one counter on it, right? So if it's, it's been essentially unleashed. a very aggressive mechanic, right? Here's, I mean, the very one first thing to point out with unleash, it's not if it just has one one counters. If it has been unleashed, yes. you can still safely put counters on those creatures. But if you say I'm unleashing him, actually, no, I'm sorry, it can't block as long as it has a plus one plus one counter. On it. <gasps> Shut up. Yeah, that's incorrect. shut your face. Um, so if you put a one one counter shut on it, it just face. cannot block. Well. Yeah. Then my pre-release night should have gone much differently. Did you? <laughs> That's funny. Um, the thing about this card is it's a really? good... Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a good Rakdos bomb. This was in Return to Ravnica. It was pretty good and limited. Uh, it was a good... It was a high top end for Rakdos, but it was a good top end for a limited deck. Um, Definitely. Outside of that, it's just not good, I well, don't think. Kitchen table, maybe. But uh, yeah, that's it. It doesn't go in any constructed deck. It's decks. no real constructed card. Quick aside, uh, read the cards, kids. Yeah, that usually helps. That's what you take you away. What the heck the card does. That's what Will. you take away from this. Gosh darn it. How could you do that? I don't know. Um, I, don't know. I will say, though, because this has haste and first strike, that's actually very, very strong. And with that 1-1 one, one counter on it, being able to unleash it, right. generally the Rakdos colors, if you didn't play during that time, the unleash mechanic was sort of their thing. And so you can no, unleash and just be super yeah, it's their aggressive, mechanic. super, super, um, just hyper-aggressive. Yeah. There was an, uh, it wasn't necessarily an unleash deck, but there was a deck that sort of featured Rakdos Cackler and things like that that had unleash, which yeah. was really good at that time. Um, um, yes, unleash was very good, mm -hmm. much more in limited. Constructed oh, yeah. play was... It was clunky, yeah, um, just because there were a lot of decks that could just pose sort of aggro decks. Like, yeah, if absolutely. you get screwed at any point, you're done. Like, well, I mean, you just it's don't your get to do much. it's your typical black red aggro deck. Yeah, right? it is. I mean, black uh, red tends to get screwed a lot. To be honest, um, I'd say <laughs> only in constructed. Really, I mean, that's my that's only my in constructed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's my limited powerhouse. It However, is, it yeah. it wasn't for this. I went Slesnia beat down for Return to Ravnica. Did you really? Yeah, because I thought Green White was. Green the, White was great. The more Con enclave. Mm -hmm, I thought it was the more aggressive. Well, the the, the more consistently aggressive deck. The V two Gazi Guild Mage was mm -hmm. pretty sweet. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, yeah. Green I White just populate a bunch of tokens. All my bird tokens got flying, baby. You ain't touching them. <laughs> <laughs> populate yeah. was a pretty cool. One. Yeah. Oh, it was so cool. It yeah, was, yeah. I think, the best one for limited, in my opinion. Because you can uh, you can flood your board with birds so easily, yeah, and just weep, 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 weep. it was really sweet. It was fly as that was a very fun limited set. Period. And that's where yeah, Return that's to Ravnica stays. But yeah. like it was it was pretty fun. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. Plus Ravnica being one of my favorite planes. Yeah, my second favorite. Innistrad. Innistrad. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> again, uh, Carnival Hillsteed, pretty good card and limited. Don't put counters on it if you wanted to block. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But outside of that, it's not that great. Um, yeah. But it is a rare, so don't expect to see it anyway. Whoopee. Um, it probably costs <laughs> now 25 cents. I think I saw like 34. I was close. You were pretty close, but it's way more expensive than you thought. No, it's not. Well, I guess percentage-wise, <laughs> maybe so, but... All right. Merely nine Will. cents. What, Kevin? I need you to tell me about rivals of Ixalan prices. With freaking... This is important. People need to know. With this. freaking pleasure. Okay, guys. If you're investing in rivals right now, it's a good time to buy a lot of stuff, um, depending on what you're making. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to swing towards the, <clears throat> the dinosaur uh, route... Which most of you are. Well, I am. <laughs> um... Mono green, green blue, whatever the case may be, now's the time to do it. Uh, because your big scary Galta Primal Hunger is only a four dollar and fifty cents card right now. These are coming from MTG Goldfish, I should say. I'll just preface that. Uh, but usually a reliable source. Yeah. Um, yeah, Galta Primal Hunger, four dollars and fifty cents. That was my first big. Wow. Yeah. It's my big Owen Wilson moment. 
Um, <laughs> not that I thought they'd be very expensive, just because no, these guys no. are hard to play uh, in standard, especially. But yeah, I was excited to see that because it means I can get a play set like on the dot. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about some of the priciest ones before I do the other cheapos. Um, the most expensive card right now from the set is uh, Kumina, Tyrant of Araska. Which makes sense. Merfolk is, <laughs> we assume, taking over standard um, it, a it, little bit. It looks to be in a position to do that. Now, yeah. that being said, neither... Usually we take these days uh, to plan out our episodes, do a little research. We haven't been able to look at the no, latest tournament actually. Uh, so data. it may not even be a thing. True. Um, but, Though I'm pretty sure it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure it's a thing. But um, Kumina... Starts you at twenty one thirty nine, mm-hmm. twenty one dollars thereabouts. Uh, but it is dropping. It is, yeah. Okay. as we expect, right? Uh, right. I mean, it's 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 dropped ten cents though today, ninety yeah. cents in the week. But at one point it was a twenty five dollar card. So, uh, I'd say wait a few more days. We have a few more days before the next tournament, I believe. That's standard. I would let the tournament play out the next couple. I, I would honestly buy into them like the day before. So, because I don't I think, think so. is if Merfolk does well, yeah, but I don't know that because this is the thing about this is this set is going to be opened a lot, I think, because of well, all the tribal stuff. Every, and yeah, so every standard set. just naturally speaking, these cards are going to go down in price pretty, ex, pretty dramatically over time. Well, that's going to take a long time, I think, like a couple months, maybe. Yes, like, unless the standard season tends toward Merfolk, which I think it will, maybe so, yeah, which I think it will. So if they, do, I'm saying, if they do well in the tournament, yeah, yeah, it could go up. It will spike, yeah, probably. Um, the next most expensive card is Rekindling Phoenix, this which is, you speculated on. Yes, which I, I think was a good call. I think it's a fantastic card, and it is only going up. Mm-hmm. Um, it is. Let me see where it is. Uh, it's gone up this week by three dollars. Um, significant over the course of a week. Yeah, uh, because I think it, like I said, it's that answer. Even though Teamer yeah. <laughs> got smacked, <laughs> got smacked. It's an answer to uh, Glorybringer mm-hmm. because I don't think Ramen Up Red on, got hit as hard as no, Teamer. I don't think so either. Even though the bannings uh, that Raptor and Ramen Up Ruins are significant, they are. I mean, I the thing so about much. it is Hazaret is a card, so like, well, it still has the longevity that Ramen Up Ruins gave it. It's just it's only on one card now, right. so it's like. It's just a little bit worse. It's not amazingly worse. You know what I mean? As yeah. a deck, as a right. deck, I'm right, saying. Right, right. Like, obviously, Hazaret's a better card. Yes. Um, but that being said, now that they have to kind of think about a longer game, yeah, Rekindling Phoenix, I think, becomes valuable because Glorybringer is uh, featured in some of those decks. Mm-hmm. Um, usually sideboard tech, but you might see two in the main board sometimes as an alternate win. Um, so, yeah, again, Rekindling Phoenix, I think, is... Uh, only going to go up, so now is probably the time to buy that. Uh, yeah, I think I'd so. Say. I would agree. Yeah. Um. Okay. And then where did it go? I wanted to talk about this car because it was awesome. Jade Light Ranger. That's right. <laughs> uh, twelve dollars. Jade Light Ranger. Wow. Oh, it's good. I mean, it is good. It's good, it? baby. Um, what makes this card so good, of course, is its versatility. Um, what kind of hamstrings that statement is that its versatility is a little bit random uh (laughs) because when it comes in it explores it's a two one Mm -hmm. so you have really like three different modes you get from jade light ranger either it comes in as a two one and you have two lands in your hand cycling through your deck ensuring you hit your land drops that's great you have you know a three two get a land drop and a three two for three cool or a four three yeah for three a scary four power creature um so it can either be hyper aggressive or can really just help uh stabilize your deck and your board um again it's random so yeah don't always bank on it but it's valuable enough to find your lands and to get this threat out there again it's also a merfolk yeah exactly. so that was the point synergy I was make is it's synergistic with the mm-hmm, merfolk deck mm-hmm, it can mm-hmm. either be a powerful powerful creature yep. that's going to be able to beat face mm-hmm. Uh, or it's just going to help you sit mm. through the deck, like you mentioned. Exactly. And so it sort of serves both roles that the Merfolk deck needs, mm-hmm. and it's perfect. I mean, that's yep. that's exactly what you need. So definitely, um, it's increased only by eighty six cents this week, eighty six yeah. to a dollar. Uh, probably again, just like the Tyrant, time to buy that as well. Probably. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, the Tyrant probably will stay down longer because of Commander. 
I'm thinking. It's probably going to be like... It is being played a good bit in Commander right now. A little. A little. You covered that last week. Yeah, we did. During um, my hiatus, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously when a new set comes out, all the Commander players out there go crazy for the legendary creatures. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Uh, this yeah. and Zakama being the big two out of this set mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Zakama is probably the the more popular one, but I could be a bit wrong on that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Though this is a very, very good commander, I would say. It's it's perfect for, it's, for the commander format because you're going to be able to flood the board pretty right. quickly. So. And there's a lot of things you can do with it to just yeah, increase, exactly. increase your bounty. Uh, another card I wanted to talk about mm-hmm. is it's on the rise, and I think it's not necessarily a sleeper, but it's certainly a card that uh, will have impact, I, th- mm. I think. Uh, Dire Fleet Poisoner. We talked about it during our set yeah. review. Um, the 2-2 Flash with Death Touch. Uh, right now, it is only, where did I see it? A uh, $4 card, basically. Yeah. So, uh, I'll pick them up. I would it, is on, it is on the rise. It's yeah. speculated to go down. Um, that being said... Uh, Death Touch is one way to ensure that you can kill attacking merfolk that have Hexproof. Yes. Which many of them will. Yeah, exactly. Um, it also kills Galta, the primal hunger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and other things. Um, also, if you're looking to pick up the primal hungers, you can pretty much do them whenever. Yeah. None of them breach $5. They are, um, they are really fun cards that you can get for really cheap. Yeah. And, you know... It's like, you know, That's great. Wizards likes to do this every once uh, most of this, most sets really mm. where they give this big cycle of really powerful mm-hmm. things, but they're just too expensive to really make it worth it. And yeah, you I mean, it's I mean? they're fun cards to play with, but exactly. you can't really but it's play like, with them. I, in Khan's block, yeah. we had the dragons, yep. the original dragon cycle. Obviously the dragon lords, some of them were decent, but even those aren't expensive. Like you can pick those right. up for less than a dollar right now. Right. Like right. so <clears throat> you know, it's just stuff like that where really cool cards, but not necessarily the most useful. Yeah. When magic is so tuned that you will win or are winning by turn four or five. Mm-hmm. Usually if I mean, it's not a mirror. Um <laughs> you know, a a, a seven costing creature just, it's just isn't not always it's, it's not, not always practical your deck. not always practical yeah. um it was like a one of i mean if you play uh uh god pharaoh's gift yes i mean, <laughs> I mean or the scare Go of god it. or the scare of god scare of god scare god's probably sweet. the best yeah. the better way to do that i'd say um but hey yeah. I'm with you on that. either or yeah. por que no los dos <laughs> see that means why not both <laughs> For those of you who do not speak Spanish. Okay. <laughs> um, for those of you that do and know that my pronunciation was awful, uh, lo siento. So, uh, yeah, I think that's that's really all the only stories I wanted to talk about yeah. from Rivals. Uh, mm-hmm. The cards I thought that would be expensive are, I'm a little surprised the Tyrant is that expensive. Yeah, At 2139. There is a, a standard deck being... Uh, crafted or it's even finished now that is scary and it's merfolk and mm-hmm. whatever but to have a $20 legendary creature is kind of yeah, strange it feels me. a bit weird This um, is, I mean this is like the best engine that merfolk will ever is. get yeah, yeah. in standard though so perhaps not uh, yeah All right. anything else we want to talk about prices uh, ones not particularly things to um, jump in on There. I mean with this set when it was spoiled there wasn't a card that stood out to me as like wow this is going to be mm-hmm. a long time you know pricey card Sure. And even now, I think once, if for some reason the Tyrant holds its price long term, I think once it rotates out, just like any other card, it will definitely tank in price. It's not, it's only really oh, good because of it's course. standard Merfolk. It's of course. not good anywhere else. Yeah, I don't don't, think. don't look to sell this in 10 years for no, 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 no. even $20. It is fun in Commander, though. Uh, mm-hmm. So I definitely expect to see it there long term, but I don't think it's going to be a competitively viable Commander. It's just a fun command. Okay. Um, and so I that's mean, my thing. I I just don't think long term it's going to hold any value. I don't know. I don't think it's that competitive because you're locked into tribal merfolk at that point, which isn't bad. But there are faster decks out there if you're doing com- competitive commander. Ah, uh, I don't know. I would I would challenge that. Okay. Really, only because of these last two sets. I think they have enough very small things that they work do have well a lot together. Of good things, but I just—I mean, I know we have all the old Merfolk as well. Win on like turn two or three. 
commander well i mean bust it well when you talk about competitive commander decks mm -hmm. if you talk about french rules then i think this stands a better chance because Maybe you, in french rules because yeah. you don't get broken yeah, combo decks fair. as often because things like soul ring is out yeah um there's just way more restrictions. We talked about French rules a yeah. while ago. If you want to go find the episode, you can. Um, I don't like playing French rules because Commander's just supposed to be... French rules was made uh, as a 1v1 mm -hmm. style of Commander, um, but I don't like playing that way. It's way better in a group, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've talked about all that before, yeah. um, but really simple, aggressive decks in Commander can honestly... they can As long as they're consistent, they can be really good. And I here's the thing... How you get consistent, Kevin? You gotta get good card draw. I get that. Gotta get efficient creatures. Yeah. Baby, who's who's got both of those in spades? Fish. Yeah. Fish. Fish. <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> cod. <laughs> oh, geez. guys. Anyway, um, if you have any questions <clears throat> on finance stuff. Perch. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite fish name. Uh, I wish uh, Monica was like right perch. here because she could side in and tell you the Hawaiian state fish. Oh, take I a know second. It, but it's not funny. She take, has to do it. Take a second. Google the Hawaiian state fish. If it's not the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apoa, I will be surprised. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. That's exactly it. Uh, Can you give him that one more time, but say it in a uh, deep, sultry voice? <laughs> Yeah, I just can't, I can't do just Gula Uma Uba Uba Akua Ah I think I said Apu Ah is what it actually is. My bad. Uh, all right. All right. Scene that bit's done. Yep. Let's not ever do that again. All right. So question of the week, guys. Uh, the question of the week this past week was: mm. What are your favorite cards from Rivals? For commander. Now, this doesn't mean that it has to be a commander. It could be right. any card to play in any deck. Uh, and we got a lot of great responses. Obviously, all of the primal elder dinosaurs came up. No surprise there. Yep. Zakama came up like a ton. Uh, again, no surprise. Mm -hmm. Azur's Gateway came up, which I think is an interesting Azur's one. Azur's Gateway. Um, um, forgive me. Is that the one that gives you mana for all the life you have? Honestly, I don't remember. Wow, we suck. I know. We're not prepared we for this. We freaking suck. Uh, while you're Do looking that up, uh, Storm the Vault came into play, which I think is we interesting suck. because as laid out by Timothy Clover, uh, it's sort of like a budget to Larian Academy, and I think mm -hmm. that it, absolutely is. it gets away with it in Commander. I, I'm uh, with you on yeah. that. Uh, Azur, actually, the Law Mage himself came into play. Uh, I could see that in Commander. The Merfolk Tyrant, no surprise. I could see that. <laughs> um, the Immortal Sun. Which, again, is a very, I mean, Commander-esque card. That's kind of what it's for. Oh, yeah, baby. I find that I'm not a huge fan of that card. I know. I know that you're not, but I think it's better than you're giving it credit for. I think for. it is. It's just, like, not my favorite thing. I wish that um, it was more... Focused? <sighs> I, no, I w <laughs> no, not at all. It gives me so many good things. Uh, mm -hmm. I wish that it affected your enemy a little more and maybe like you. only opponents planeswalkers yeah. can't be you know if opponents can't activate that'd be awesome that would be sweet it'd um, be great in like prison style decks and things which i still think it's pretty decent in prison style decks but like mm -hmm. it's just I, not my favorite yeah. card uh alinda people are excited about her uh which i think is interesting and this is really the last one i wanted to talk about is that alinda is a card that a lot of people said they're really excited to play as their commander Okay. Um, and I've seen a lot of gameplay with her as the commander, yep. and she works out pretty well. It's not like she's bad by any means. But because she has to go to the graveyard first to get the trigger, to get all the 1-1s one and stuff mm -hmm. like that, it just doesn't feel like she's really the most optimal choice for a commander. Like, I would want her in my deck 100%. I don't know that I'd want her as my commander. Um, um, and to the per to the people who said Alinda, by the way, none of them said they were running her in on this post as her commander. We've just seen that in the past. Okay. Um, I mean, I w I would agree that that's not the optimal place yeah. for her. However, you can choose to keep her in the graveyard and just reanimate her somehow if you'd you like. Can. Absolutely, um, you could build a deck around that mechanic mm -hmm. and make that work. Of it's course. just it seems if you're going to reanimate something, I don't know that Alinda would be my first choice. Well, Does that makes sense. Yes, unless. <laughs> Unless you're just trying to have fun and not win the game. <laughs> I mean, Which I... I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, <laughs> give me a day or two. I'll yeah, have yeah. you a combo where you can just keep 
bringing her back. By all means, back. Dude, if you can do that. Unlimited great. one ones, baby. Vampire Splinter Twins. Let's go. <laughs> Not as good as Splinter Twin, but hey. I've realized that my fatal flaw in playing mm-hmm. Magic is that I'm too serious when playing Magic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot. Like, that's a big problem absolutely. of mine. I will agree. Yeah. It gets people mad. Um, it got uh, you mad a couple of times. Oh, God. It will, it will again. It We're will cubing again. this weekend, so. It will again. No, I think cube is a general exception. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's Jeff Storm. But then Parks will just beat you for me. Here's so the it's thing. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I just want to point this out. I told Parks this. The yeah. only time I drafted Storm in a cube draft was yeah. like on the first one. Since then, I don't think I've actually drafted Storm. Since it resolves Inception, yes. Well, yeah. But I mean, how many times did we cube before that? Like a handful. All right. Well, a handful of times then. I can remember. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't draft Storm as much as people think, but I'm fine being tagged. No, as yes, the he Storm does. Player. Hold on, stop it. I'm yes, fine he does. I'm being tagged as the Storm player. Yes, he does. Uh, yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, you Only have draft- a Storm player that drafts Storm would say he doesn't draft Storm. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like uh, the Patriots saying they're not actually that good at football. We lose games too, guys. What are you talking about? Uh, for our non-American viewers, <laughs> the Patriots are a professional football team mm. and my personal favorite. Nah, that's a lie. We're I like the Browns. Well, now. no, that's not a lie. I'm a Pats fan, We're but I also really now. like the Browns. Just to kind of like meet in the middle of success, yeah. you got the best team ever. And then the Browns, <laughs> which uh, used to be like, I don't know, a different team. Not that they were ever great. <laughs> I <clears throat> love football. That's a lot. Kevin hates no, sports. I, I really don't like sports. <laughs> okay, before this turns into a sports podcast. <laughs> we got our crack packs guys. And uh, now that Will is back on, we do officially get to pick our gold cards. Oh. To nobody's yeah. surprise. Yours is uh, Gauntlet the Primal Hunger. Yeah, and also to pick nobody's the surprise, big scary dinosaur dude. Mine is the Primal Tide, and I don't remember his name. <laughs> um, Huma Huma Upo Nawa. Upa Upa Aqua. Kicha Kua Kua Noni. That means what in Japanese? What? I just thought I'd throw that in there for you. I'm so happy you did. Japanese so is so cool, guys. By the way, if you're gonna learn a language, learn Japanese. It's incredibly difficult. But y'all, there's 2100, but y'all. 2,100 unique characters in one kind of their language. They've got like two different kinds of their language, dude. <laughs> to supplement foreign words and to use some of their own. Dog, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's really cool. If I was intelligent enough, I would learn Japanese. I work with a guy who knows Japanese. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and he was telling me about it. And I was super impressed mm-hmm. and jelly that I was not that intelligent. <gasps> Peanut butter and jelly sandwich would be good right now. Oh, that's what I'm craving. Um, nope. Induced amnesia is what I got. I got Slaughter the Strong. Oh, that's a pretty good card for limited. Um, yes. It's an interesting one yes. for limited. <laughs> he, yes. I mean, but it kind of it's cements you into one strategy, kind of. Mm-hmm. If this is like your, oh, I want to pick that card. Because you have to kind of play a weenie strategy. Yeah. Strategy? What did I say? I think I said that. Um... You know, each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls mm-hmm. with the total power four or less than sacrifices all other creatures he or she controls. So, it's putting me pretty solidly into the wiener strategy. Yeah, that's true. Um, also got two of the forerunners, which could kind of, I mean, you know, push me towards a... Those are pretty good, um, Certain tribal yeah. areas. Um, yeah, not a great pack. Uh, Sun Sentinel actually isn't bad. But it's not a first, it's not a first <laughs> pick. Not first but it's a pick really great two drop. Probably uh, one of the the forerunners. Yeah. It, for your pack, my pack wasn't very good either. I really the only three considerations in my mind are Riverwise Augur, which mm-hmm. I don't particularly like, only because there's not enough shuffle effects to make it that great. It's a good card because it replaces itself, but it's just not amazing. You just want it to be a different card, and it's not. I do. Can get <laughs> I do. Uh, I think that's my pick. This one? No, no, no. Oh, uh, Riverwise Auger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Kagafidon. 
Um, Mutiny is also just an okay removal spell, but I, I mean, probably Riverwise Augur, just because this pack is very unexciting. And Deuced Amnesia is definitely not a card that I would want in Limited. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. I would probably take your Slaughter in the Strong. If nothing else, just to see how good it is, because I think it could be. I mean, it could be. I'm not super enthused. Yeah. I kind of like Tilalani's Crown. Honestly, I've seen that card be medium, but again, not as a first pick is the thing. All yeah. these cards are great at like pick three yeah. or four. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, Spirewinder actually isn't. No, Spirewinder might mm. have to. Well, no, that was a first pick. Mm. A two-three flyer. What's the white forerunner? Is that the vampire? Yeah, one? I yeah, would yeah. pick that. Again, as forerunners are probably where I'm going. Yeah. but I don't know. I like the vampire know, one man. way more than the pirate one. That's Oh, yeah. Because pirates well, are not that great. Sorry, guys. They might be in Constructed, actually. I, but... th I think Parks and Pig Dead, I recall it. Yeah, probably. That might be it. No, I changed everything. It's Dead High Rig Holler. It's a, it's a bounce spell on a stick. That's true. And that encourages me, encourages me to be aggressive. Yeah, Dead Eye Rig Holler. Scratch everything I said about that, Tom. I lied to all of you. Yeah. It's basically what happened. Deal with it. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> Jerry. Well, oh. Is there anything else you want to say? Before we uh, wrap this episode up. Um. 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 I had a bit for this, honestly. Did you really? Yeah, it's not my original bit, oh, okay. but there was one thing I wanted to bring up, but I forgot what it was. It's an old Keaton Peel sketch, <laughs> and it's golden. Let me plug two of my favorite comedians ever. All right, go for it. They're great artists. They're great uh, creators. Their names are uh, Keaton Michael K, and I don't know Peel's real name. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keaton Peel, as they're, as they're yeah, known. Yeah. They're great. They're hilarious. They had a sketch about football, but wait. <laughs> It was Marshawn Lynch. Mm. He's a really good player. Oh, <laughs> thanks. And Richard Sherman. He's also really good. Giving a Super Bowl speech, like an interview. And instead of talking about football, they just talked about movies. Yeah. Which was really cool. Um, and Marshawn Lynch said, biscuits on gravy. <laughs> a lot. Um, so, <laughs> final summation. It's degrading. I do not have anything to say. You know what I'm going to do? randomly yeah, once for I don't. every episode that we do yeah i'm gonna pick a random football term okay and just ask you and be like i'll, I'll be like pigskin something <laughs> i'll just i'll just randomly in the episode i love that you picked the one football term that's been around yeah, forever exactly. that no one really says exactly and then asked is that a thing <laughs> yeah, exactly not that like you should know just that like yeah. yes Kind of, but no one says it. Or like, I'll be like, <laughs> a person's name. Go on. <laughs> Pick one. I want to see if you know one. Um, who's the... <laughs> Don't say who's the, you gotta say a name. <laughs> no, I, I can't think of his name. Okay. The, the, the quarterback for the Panthers. It's Cam Newton, sir. Cam Newton. Nam Kooten, as I, I like to call him. At one point. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's Cam Newton. Dab. Is that a thing? Uh, no, it shouldn't be. Oh, okay. It used to be when the Panthers had that 15 and 1 season. Yeah. But, Even um, I know that's not a thing anymore. That's, uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Charlotte area listeners, I apologize. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean. But up you go, you soggy rat. I just read this card right now. <laughs> that was a beautiful moment. I'm glad uh, it's captured great. on film. <laughs> My reaction is great. You're going to read look this, look at this back and I'm going to go. I'm just going to zoom in on your face. All right, guys. Do this it. This is degrading so hard. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well, yes. it's great to have you back. Thank you, man. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to like or comment down below. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, as you probably saw at the top of the episode with his little intro thing, there's a donation link down below. No, I didn't say it. No, I know, but we have a little trailer that we put at the front of the videos is it me it. yeah it's you oh, i forgot we made that
Anyway, uh, there's a donation link down in the description. Hmm. Please don't feel pressured, but if you would like to donate and support us monetarily do, speaking, do, 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 you do. absolutely can. We've already had a few donations, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we also have a Patreon. What's up? We also have a Patreon. You can check out the links down below. Pressure! Pushing down on me, pushing down on you, the man has fun. My name's Ken. My name's Will. This has been a result. Under pressure!